Hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of Aquarian Radio at AquarianRadio.com. And I'm your host, Janet Pierre Lesson, and today is an episode of Experiencers Network. And today we're going to interview Ruth Ann Friend. And Ruth Ann has been on our network many times before. She's a, a wonderful woman from a small Midwestern town in southern Illinois, and she's lived in that community all of her life. She married and had four children and has grandchildren. She's a clairvoyant like her mother and also her son, David, who has passed and gone on to the other side. And David and Ruth share their worlds together with the spirits and other universal beings, ETs, and they share it throughout their lives and even into this existence now. She's a Reiki master teacher and practitioner and has taught at the college level. She has presented at many workshops on the spirit world and Reiki, and she performs hypnosis and does readings. She's written three books, Under the Rainbow Crossing, about the house that she still lives in that was built in the 1850s and has seven different spirits in it. The story of David is based on her son's abilities and his and mine and her reincarnations to come back into this life. And Aliens Within Our Own Selves tells of Ruth and David's lives, life with our universal ET families, and what the ETs want to tell the world. And um, her latest book, Aliens Within Our Own Selves, is based on true events and is a phenomenal story of two people living in a dual consciousness by finding out that they both have been chosen by the ETs as companions. Uh, this book's about living a secret life and keeping records of their experiences together until the ET sold them the purpose of all this. The ETs want us to speak truth for them using the ETs of words and their many messages and why we have been schooled by them. They want the truth told about them and why they come to the earth and they're responsible times for many of the new cures with the ideas and answers put into a human mind when a person thinks this is their own thoughts. And so today you're going to learn about many things you never dreamed of and how things really are that make up our world. And Ruthann, welcome back to our show. Oh, thank you. And thank you for having me back on. I always enjoy it very much. I do too. Uh, This has been a very busy holiday season, and I'm so delightful that you decided to take a break from all the festivities and join us today. Uh, you know, today's just kind of laid back, and we're going to play catch up and see what's new with you. And um, whatever you want to tell us would be great. Wherever you want to start, you have a incredibly um, what do you call it? Uh, complicated story with yourself and David, who's now on the other side. That's your your son and uh, your contact with extraterrestrials. Let me just ask you. Um, are you still having contact? And if so, what what's happening with your you and your ET yeah. friends and David? Uh, yes, I do. Um, some of the newer information uh, are from some beings that I had not seen before. So um, I had written down everything as it happens, of course, because because I document everything, and. Uh, it was in the early a.m. hours, uh, not too many weeks ago, that uh, I looked up. I knew they were there to see these extremely tall beings. They were so tall that they had to bend their heads because of a ceiling. You know, they just they couldn't wow. stand straight up. And they were uh, very long-armed, very long-legged, and very thin, and they were all around me. And it was, of course, when I was in bed because, like I said, it was in the a.m. hours. Um, mm-hmm. I had a really good feeling about them. And I also knew I had been with them earlier in travel. Um, sometimes um, they let me see things familiar as being in my room. And I may not be, but that's how the ETs can do this at times. They can make you think you're there to just relax you, and you actually are out and about with them. But I knew I was there. Um, so um, they they looked very strong, although they were fragile, and they were all one color. Uh, they had like a form-fitting clothing on, and they were gray-colored. Uh, immediately I saw hands coming over to me. And at first I didn't know if I was to accept them or not, but I felt no danger at all. And I 
extended my hand out, you know, in that direction to them. Um, I called them the giants because of them being so tall. <laughs> and um, yeah, the they, next it's morning, for them. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, they had no no hair on their head at all, like the little grays. And I did uh-huh. not get a, a good look, or else they've let me forget about their faces because I, I couldn't remember their faces exactly. Um, but I just couldn't get over how, how long their arms and legs was. So um, wow. they're still coming, and um, we're, I'm do- into some different levels now. I... Uh, was taken about two weeks ago to, uh, the, well, we went to look at these blueprints. I didn't know what was happening. And the ETs oh, spread wow. out all these blue, blueprints in front of me. And I'm trying to get what they're wanting me to learn about or know. So um, I looked at um, at these blueprints and these objects. Then I began to see uh, the objects, and uh, these things that were being built were not by them. They were on Earth, and they're uh, of destruction. I mean, they're weapons that uh, I felt really um, concerned about, and I'll soon know the meaning more of these things, but uh, these were new life forms that... mm -hmm. So let, let me slow this down a little bit. So they mm-hmm. first were the extremely tall beings. You can't remember their faces. They're gray in, in skin color, mm-hmm. and their, their uh, head has, has no hair. Were they related mm-hmm. to this second abduction, the same people? Uh, oh, yes, I believe so. That's the way I understood it, the way I saw them. And uh, okay. I, I kept wondering who they were, what they were called, but I did not ask anything because uh, of these blueprints and what they were showing me of this uh, object. Uh, this huge ob- object was laying on its side. It was very long. And then they would uh-huh. show me how it would look if it was straight up. And I'll say that it the only common word, like a rocket, that's the only thing okay. I can tell you. <laughs> uh, so, And they were very highly super intelligent. And uh, they, so they, they were not to be afraid of. This, so this was just a blueprint for rockets. You, you didn't see an actual rocket. You just saw the design and plans for the rocket. I saw the plans, the blueprints, and then they did show me this object. Uh, the closest thing I can tell you of how it looked, but it wasn't a rocket, but it, it looked similar to a rocket. So uh, it was very powerful, and uh, it was upsetting to me because I, I knew that this was a um, object of destruction. So uh, the information, when it always came to my son and I, a lot of it came in portions because they have to give the human mind uh, time to, uh, you know, process the information. Right, yeah. So they can't mm-hmm. give, you know what I mean, I know. Uh, right, yeah. So anyway, these beings have uh, been coming and... Uh, I had made uh, notes after they were here, like I always do. Um, let me see. I can find real it quick. Did you any uh, indication who who had built the, these um, this weapon of destruction uh, I, and where it was? I have the, I have a very strong feeling it was uh, designed by humans by man. Uh, and that's okay. why I was very concerned, you know. So this is something um, that they wanted me to know, and they will give me more information on it. Like I said, it will be a little okay. bit of time. Um, so then um, we uh, they've been coming, and they told me that um, I had been taking a certain medication. I don't even take medicine hardly ever, but I had been on one. And uh, they let me know to quit the one human medicine. This is their words. And then they said they reprogrammed me again and that I had graduated to a newer, higher level. 
And they said life will be more enjoyable without the one medicine. So make and make your choices wisely. So they really look after me just like they always have uh, for my wow. son and I when he he was here. Um, but yeah, we've I've had a lot of new things happen. Um, it was about a week after that that uh, the familiar family of ETs came and. Uh, they were just letting me know, yes, it was our craft that you've seen over the trees. I had seen uh, one of the UFOs the night before. And they said, we come for you tonight to go with us to your home. And then they gave me Ooh. a new galactic uh, name that they gave me. And they talked about a planet I had never heard of that I probably haven't heard of millions <laughs> called Veron. Uh-huh. I don't know if you have you ever heard of that one? B E R O N. Uh, I spelled it. It's B or V. B is in boy or V is in Victor. I I thought they said with a V. V is in Victor. So B E R O N. That's the way I just spelled it, just because that's how it sounded to me. That's how it sounded. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. No, I haven't heard of it, but let me quickly Google it. Let's see if somebody else has. Uh, it, it just, for some reason, it made me think of Phil Croft. Was that his name? The, the man who was the a magazine. Uh, no, Phil. Let me see. Craft. Uh, yeah, I have his book right here. Philip A. Carp. 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 He he wrote the book. The contact has begun. He was a 25-year veteran of the Los Angeles. Angeles Times Metro Desk. For some reason, I just got a like a psychic hint of that, and I turned around. And the book is right there. But let's then put the planet <laughs> Veron. Let's see what we have. Because I don't know. I just got that. That okay. No, there's a planet Verona. Veron. Oh, anime. Okay. It's an anime planet. It's anime, anime planet. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, Baron was a planet located within the. Let me pull this up. Star Wars. Uh, okay, it's part of Star Wars. Baron wow. was a rustic trade <laughs> world which was dominated by forest and tropical jungles. Uh, they were known for their. Tem- Tevernor trees, which covered three quarters of the planet's land. Wow, there's a whole uh, story about Veron. And so I, you can yeah, find I didn't that know on all that. Star Wars <laughs> uh, Wikipedia, Wikia, Star Wars Wikia.com, Wiki slash Veron forward legends. So it has a whole. So yeah, it's interesting when we get these things that they're they're actually, you know. Well, they're fiction, but that fiction could be depicting something that's real. So, and it says it was it a planet. Uh oh. But I hope it still is. Uh, it attracts many tourists. And uh, wow. Okay. So, so uh, what did they tell you? You 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 have a new galactic. You got a new galactic name. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, what's your new um, they, uh, what's, what's your new galactic I'm, name? It's I'm going to spell it first. A L D A T R O N. Aldatron. Aldatron. And mm-hmm. uh, how did you get the new name? They just said that's your name, or did you get to select it, or what was going on? What was there a ritual or something like? A, no, they just simply was, said. Uh, your galactic name where this planet was was Albatron. And uh, so I wrote that down because I wanted to uh, have it correctly. I'm glad I'm glad you found that about uh, Veron, though. I, I'm going to look that up. And then they continued, uh, as always, they're so compassionate. Uh, we love you, and we will never leave you. And we have all been together since the beginning of time. So that uh-huh. was uh, what happened that evening. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I've been having different things. Um, I know there's a lot of uh, talk going on now about the um, disclosure, um, you know, of um, coming forth with the um, experiencers, people who've had experiences yeah. with um, 
the UFOs and ETs, and I'm so happy about that, that they're coming forward now. I am, too. I'm ecstatic. Uh, what's your take on that? So uh, the, the Pentagon has released the files that they, they you know, they were chasing some UFOs or, or recording them, and uh and then uh, For the Stars with Tom DeLong is an organization with a number of high-level whistleblowers and researchers that are unifying to do something to escalate, accelerate the disclosure process. And, and some people uh, believe Tom DeLong, and some people think it's a um, distraction or it's a you know, they're going to do false flags and Oh, it's so complicated. It makes my head spin. What's your take on all this? Tell me more about what you think about what's happening now. Well, um, I'm very careful uh, about what I believe by how I feel, and I know you're uh, also very gifted, so you know what I mean. Um, So on this, uh, all these things coming out, Some of the things uh, I don't uh, feel quite right about, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but uh, so I sat down and I asked a question uh, earlier tonight, you know. Okay, good. About this, and uh, they are talking about our world, our planet now, that we're not ready yet on Earth. And they said, think carefully on what you hear. Above all, live your earth life. Let us do the rest. Um, They said, humans are not ready yet, and some are misled. And there's a lot of chaos, as we know, on earth. It's everywhere. They said, let it come when it should. We will only come when it is our selected time, not before. And then they said, slow down, slow down. So uh, I asked David then, and David said, the world will need to have patience. Disclosure comes some closer. Earth people are not to know everything. A human brain cannot hold all of this information, all of this universal information. Um, So, you know, I know what he's saying here, uh, and he said... I'll find my other note here. Um, Uh Uh-huh. Did I? Okay, then think on this. Oh, I already had mentioned that. He's talking about what after disclosure. Have I mentioned that? Uh, After disclosure? Okay. No, tell me about after disclosure. He said, have you thought on this? He said, there is so much to do. Those are, those people... Humans are not ready yet on earth. Think carefully on what you hear, and above all, live your life and let us do the rest. Yeah, I had one over there. Yeah, you so, did that part, in other yeah. words, mm-hmm. so in other words, you know, um, they're, they're wanting uh, to, I'm, they're hoping, I believe, that this kind of slows down because it's, it's like he had a good question there. So, uh, what after disclosure when it does come? You know, do right. you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like just a dead <laughs> stop. You know, okay, well, right. after d- disclosure, uh, when everything's there. In other words, in short, uh, we can't make anything happen. It has to be up to the extraterrestrials. We can't make things happen. If it's not time, everything, as we know, has to be in the right timing. So... Uh, this disclosure, how it's coming, it'll come at the very exact time it's supposed to. So uh, that's about all I got on all that, but it made sense. Oh, because I'm, I'm so impatient, though. I'm so weary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh, tired. You, you know, Please, I think it's. <laughs> it, I, I know. Well, he said it's coming. But I think there has to be a certain things in order before this happens is what he's meaning by going through all that, that we we have to learn to be patient more. And, uh, you uh, know, ever since I was a, a little kid and, and him too when he was born, uh, they've always taught us uh, about patience and timing. 
and that nothing comes unless it's in the right timing. And I think I have grew up with this for so long, I don't get very impatient because I know when they say something that that's how it's going to be, <laughs> you know. So I just <laughs> go on my way and and then live my life and, uh, you know, work with um, uh, our family of extraterrestrials and um, they keep teaching. So they still come, yes, and uh, I still go with them and uh, quite often uh, I always I... will. Yeah. But, well, that's uh, good. I I've had contact too. Mine takes place in. Uh, it's like I go to a different world, and I uh, I have a different like I have a it's not a job. But I have things I do there, just like I have things I do here. And I often visit this one huge city. Um, the, there's the architecture is way not human. It's like <laughs> this is not from the earth. I can walk down their streets. Or, and actually, when you when you're walking, you glide. It's like uh, I don't know mm-hmm. what's going on with the gravity, but I don't. Uh, I, I I don't even think my feet touch the ground, but I I make the motions like I'm going to walk. But um, I can be in a huge city, and before I know it, I I've, I've across the whole city. I'm on the other side, and then I'll say, "Well, I want to go over to the part where they have the marketplace, and they don't have money. They have, they want you to take their stuff. They, have, they have a lot of leisure time, and they're creative, and and uh, they go and they cook foods. And so you're walking by, they, you know, they're, they're trying to entice you with the smells and what they have, and, and their reward is when when somebody takes their item that they've made, the food or the, uh, you know, the um, the decorative jewelry or whatever it is. The, the value is not in, uh, you know, digits or credits or coins or paper, but in, oh, today, honey, you know, they go home at night, today, sweetheart, I gave away 500 uh, rings and, you know, whatever, or, or five rings, and they're just so happy when someone appreciates their handicraft. It's a very strange way of looking at it. and uh, A lot of the buildings have life uh, within it, like the, the trees interweave with the... It's like tree houses, right? The, but these could be giant buildings and they have giant trees like on Avatar and they, they're somehow... Vegetation is incorporated right into the buildings and so you don't have like we have here on Earth these skylines where it's just all metal you know and concrete but it's living everything's living and it's breathtaking and then they come back here and they go oh, okay i'm back here to do this part. <laughs> and, uh, it's it's kind of um susie hansen says that, that we have a dull soul so yeah i have a dull soul but maybe it's even more because sometimes it's different worlds i'll be i'll be flying and it's my body flying you know and or i'll be swimming and I can do the same thing in the oceans or in the waterways and and so it's very exciting for me but when I heard that they were going to start doing this disclosure uh, uh, that was what about oh, two weeks ago now maybe we could have and I just got a bunch of downloads around it it was like oh yeah it's time we've got to do something we've got to do something because the other news, every day you turn on the news and it's just dark, 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 <laughs> dark stuff happening. Mm-hmm. Lots of um, mm-hmm. fighting, um, juxting, juxtaposing, and um, they're trying to get their, their position. Their po- I don't know what's real anymore with all this stuff that's being said on the news. It's it's over. It's information overload, and I, I don't know what position to take or what to believe. I know what I know as an ET contact. I know that's unknowingness, but this, these are all beliefs, and then people are arguing their beliefs, and I just mm-hmm. run away. I run away. I don't know what to believe. <laughs> when you get into the nuances of Trump did this and Obama did this and Clinton did this, and then these are all just words. I don't think anybody can prove anything. You know, let's. Where's the love? Mm-hmm. I just go. Let's go outside mm-hmm. the spot. Where's the love? And that's why I love talking to contactees because it's just so loving. <laughs> Where I go, it's just mm-hmm. loving. I come home glowing, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I'm vibrating at a higher frequency. So 
that's why I love talking to experiencers because we are in a different world. We're, we're in a whole other paradigm. And I'm hoping yes. to show the way. I'm hoping that here's yeah. another way of looking at existence, you know, and here's the way to go there. And somehow helping them, my brother, he's very, very conservative and, you know, he's in that whole world <laughs> there of ultra conservatism. And it's like, uh, doesn't see, doesn't see how to get there. Like, yeah, you might have these Star Trek and to him it's all crazy, right? But it's like if you could just wrap your head around it, that there are other ways to do life that's mm-hmm. way different than how human beings are doing this world. When you come from the ET perspective, looking at the Earth, you go, well, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> Anyway, I'll <laughs> pass the stick back to you because it's uh, so I, I'm seeing the world from other eyes, from through alien eyes, and I I feel um, great love and compassion for everybody, and um, it seems like I'm I'm more empathetic than ever before because it's like I feel it's like if something could be happening to somebody else, and it's like I, it feels personal really feels, mm-hmm. it goes to my heart and it, it hurts my heart and my soul and it's like, okay, so I go talk, I go up to councils, I go on board ships, I go to other plants, I am working, 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 but I don't know how to handle the disconnect because there's still um, the integration, bringing the information back here and translating it and putting it into human words and actions I don't know what to do. Do you have any ideas on that? Maybe your maybe your handling frequencies or channels are more uh, open and uh, clear communication than what I'm getting because it's I, I'm not getting the um, I get the downloads, I get the experiences, but I don't get the integration because I I have so many questions. It's like okay, you showed me all that. Now what do I do with that? What do I do with that? What do you think, Ruthann? Well, you. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you know. I think everybody gets information different ways, and because there's so many thousands of species out there, um, they we talk uh, back and forth pretty well as normal as we're talking. You know, they may use our language a little mm-hmm. bit different, but they're experts at it because they've been here forever. Um, they are they are uh, our family too, and they always told David and I that they were schooling us uh, from the time we were small, and um, that we were from many worlds and many places. So I know what you mean by work because when they take me or when they took both of us, we were always busy and we were doing things and we were traveling to other places and we were seeing other beings. And it's real funny about this planet, Veron, because um, that I remember we went to uh, this one certain planet and I feel now that's where it had to be because it had all the foliage and like huge... Uh, leaves and all sorts of things like that on huge plants and so on. And when you said that, uh-huh. I thought, oh, my gosh, you know. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> Maybe we're uh, on the same planet. I, I, yeah, and I and I thought that sounds like uh, this Veron sounds like uh, this place they used to take us so much. And I remember um, how loving when you look in those eyes, I don't think a person could ever feel so much love from these beings that work with us and you. You know, they're all so full of love and compassion. And they said um, that they sent us here for an experiment, and that way they were learning more about human um, nurturing, more about love for children, each other, and they were learning more about compassion. And uh, that's why that we were sent here. Uh, and they called us uh, their universal soldiers. But um, I, I'm probably like you are. I wouldn't know life any other way, like the travel, the, the learning things, the codes, the universal languages. Uh, this is our world, and uh, we're here just for 
however length of time that we have. So uh, we're also, of course, learning every day here. And we came here to also learn earth life. And um, mm-hmm. it was, it's been very hard because we, we came, when we come from, like you and me and many others, we come from this supreme love and light. And when we come into planet Earth, it, it was very dark to us, very dark. And they right. said we have, yeah, they said we have supplied you and your son with all the gifts because you're going to need them like a suit of armor to get through your life on this planet. So uh, we um, do a lot with them and see a lot, and they teach us a lot, and they always have. One thing they do uh, quite often, more than ever now, is they have to regenerate me a lot and re-energize me because this kind of travel, they said for years and years, takes a toll on the human body. So I was just down sick again for quite a while, which I'll call the flu. But actually, my energy was just shot <laughs> because I just <laughs> go, you know, in and out, out uh, in and out of these realms, you know. And um, I wouldn't know what you know. That makes sense. I like, that I yeah, that makes. Let me just interject something here because I was uh, in town and I was going to have Ray Hernandez on my show. Oh, uh, and what's that? I think it was yesterday. Yeah, this is this is Friday. I think it was Wednesday. Anyway, um, so I'm running. I'm coming home from shopping, and and I'm, I, I I said to my husband, "Are you going to meet me?" And he said, "Yeah, I'm going to meet me. I'm going to meet you. I'll be on the show." And we we rushed to get home, and as soon as we got up here, it was like, "Oh man, I can't hold my head up." It felt like I got hit with a full blown flu and thank god it didn't hit me while i was driving i managed to get home and then i'm coming up to the house and then a few minutes later he came home and he and we just fell into bed and i just fell into this deep sleep like i was getting recharged and so was it was he and and i managed to get up and i i, I had asked my co-host to go on and i said I'm, I'm not able to do this i just can't I can't lift my head, so I texted it to her, and and I texted to Ray, and I said, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's going on. It's like, I can't move. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. I felt felt like I was being, uh, like, emergency recharge, you know? (laughs) Like I was a a phone (laughs) that went empty. (laughs) And and then I woke up, like, a few hours later, and I was like, Wow. Thank you. Whatever you did, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so you had the flu. You call it the flu. We don't know what it is. We call it the mm-hmm. flu. Oh, I got the flu. Right. So, explain yeah. that again. You, you were, you were just. Uh, well, your batteries were drained, or something. It's just, uh, yeah, just the same. Like you said, I mean, they realize how hard this is on our bodies, and uh, they have to take care of us and they will because of the, of the work we're all doing so they take good care of us but uh, they've warned me the last five years especially that I must slow down because I've lived my whole life in these different worlds you know spiritual paranormal the universal world and earth world and um, so it's hard for me to say no I always want to I want to yeah. help everybody and then they say you cannot heal the world, <laughs> and you know they have a humor <laughs> also, but they but they mean it. And um, this time they said you must listen, you must listen. And uh, but my son, the reason he lived 14 years longer, we knew why because uh, they would take and energize and work on him. They would take samples of his hair, of his blood, sometimes just a tiny little, uh, just tiny thing of skin. And uh, they knew how to keep him going, and they did. And they kept him as long uh, as they needed to until it was his time to return home. But one thing that I don't know if I'll ever quite understand is why it's so hard for a human being to believe that the creator created many other beings than just us on earth, this tiny little planet. 
And when the Creator created all of us, you know, it was all done at the same time. And uh, I call my ETs the Christ-like beings because that's what they are. And um, Mm -hmm. we have had, I just don't understand why it's such a big um, thing, you know, but maybe it's just because that's what we're a part of, you know. But uh, I think, gee, Earth is such a second to the smallest planet they know of. And (laughs) why couldn't there be other beings that were created. It's kind of being like, well, I don't believe there's people in France, <laughs> you know, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, I, uh, yeah, I, they, I get that totally. But, but yeah. when you, when you, and it really shocks me when I encounter that because I'm walking my own little world here with all these other experiencers and we're going, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And people that are open, they're, they're literally, their minds are open outside of this box and they see uh, you know it's logical it's like of course this whole Mm -hmm. giant uh, universe with uh, millions of galaxies isn't just for human beings to look at we can't even see half of them with the naked eye so um and and we've been talking about that on the show because it's christmas right and what is christ what is Mm -hmm. crazy consciousness and so what right. what are your thoughts on that? I think that uh, I'll just say well, real quickly that there there were ambassadors that came down and they were they could have been more than one, but they're the Christed beings. Yeah. So go ahead. You said something on, on that line. Right. Uh huh. And I it doesn't try to take away anybody's thoughts, religion, or anything. Uh, everything we're all a part of each other. Everything is one. And these heavenly beings uh, that have worked with us also, uh, Archangel Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, those were the three who's always worked uh, with us. And uh, I, I think, it, you know, it all works together. And um, it's it's real uh, hard for me at times to understand why people uh, don't want to believe there's other beings uh, from other worlds and galaxies, like you said. And the thousands and thousands of these species, I mean, um, they're uh, very positive and compassionate and loving. And, of course, there are the ones who are negative. Uh, But that's just like people on Earth or anywhere else. Some are negative and many are positive, you know. So it kind of all blends together, actually, although we may use different terms. Uh, I think Sasha wants to come on the show, but he's calling the wrong number. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me text him real quick, see if he'll get that. Um, I know if I go to accept it, it'll block, it'll block me being on the show here. So I'll, I'll see if I can get him in on the blog talk. I'll call him. Let's get Sasha. Okay. We're trying an experiment here. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he had yeah. to go into town. Yeah, let's get Sasha here. He likes to talk to Ruth Ann. Okay, so I'm calling. We'll see, if, see if he will pick up. <laughs> okay. Ringy diggy one, ringy diggy two, ringy diggy three. Come on, Sasha, pick up. Uh, anyways, one more ring. He either will hear or he won't. <laughs> Uh, it looks like he's not going to pick up. Your call has been forwarded to an automated nope. voice messaging ah, system. Okay. Cool. Eight nope, zero. Nope, 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 nope. Stop, stop. Okay, here we go. Back to our discussion. Oh, well, he kept calling me on the wrong line. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I'll give him the number. I'll tell him to call the show. Here we go. One, one more try. Where is that? Nope, I don't want to hang up you. Please don't hang up. Okay, keep talking, and I'm going to text him the phone number. Um, so, okay. so we're talking about the Christ in consciousness, the the cosmos, and all the beings out there. And it's really hard to explain that to people. I have a brother who was very open-minded when I was a child, and um uh, and he studied, he taught me about Zechariah Sitchin and the Anunnaki and ancient aliens and all that stuff. And now it's uh, 20, 30 years later, 
and it's almost like a, it's a new whole new person. I'm starting from point one, and I'm explaining to him, you know, we have all these whistleblowers and experiencers, and he goes, but what's your proof? And I go, well, everybody's, you know, coming forth. They're, they're on their deathbed. There's millions of experiences. But it, it goes back to what's your proof? But it's like we don't walk around through life and, you know, picking up little proof things from the ET. You know, they're giving us strange metals that are not from the earth. Or they're not giving us proof. They're not letting us take selfies with them and go back, you know. So yeah. there's no way to prove it in the regular concrete way, which would be proof. But if, if we came back with a selfie with the with the grays in it, they'd say, oh, you CGI'd it, you know. So um, I don't know what to do with that. So I'm, I'm just talking to my brother. I love my brother. But it seems like somewhere mm-hmm. he got lost along the way and he's stuck in this. But, you know, testimonials stand up in a court of law. You can convict people and send them to jail for life or execute them based on testimonials and the courts will say right. that's proof but um, these people that are in this little matrix they want proof in some other fashion and it doesn't matter what you say that's not proof so yeah i'm in i'm in maui yeah. and my brother's in pennsylvania what do you deal with in your world with people uh, i just run well, away from them and don't talk to them <laughs> <laughs> yeah i um I think I know who I can say something to about it, and I know who I uh, don't say something uh, because they're not ready. But um, there was something that our family of ETs wanted done so bad, and uh, I put it in the books, was uh, they arranged uh, for years to to come over the house, and they had us film them. So I have tubs of film, and I can show exactly where it is where they are, uh, they made sure that I um, videoed uh, the streets, uh, the uh, homes uh, go right back up. Sometimes there'd be a mother ship and several little ships. Sometimes there'd be one ship. I mean, we never knew. Also, they uh, let uh, things come out on film. So uh, I have things, I do have visual proof of things. Uh, I'm trying to get, uh, I'm going to get a program together somewhere in this area for spring and um, hopefully to uh, try to explain some of these things we're talking about tonight and uh, the other worlds, the other galaxies, the other beings. And I believe those who are meant to be there will be there. It's like a book. I think people always read certain books that are supposed to read the book, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, it's, right. that it will mean something to them. But um, when I was a speaker down in New Mexico in July, um, I uh, did talking on uh, the spiritual and paranormal world, and I had a lot of pictures because they also had me take a lot of spirit pictures. So I had qu- quite a lot of those on big boards, and... Um, on the screen, uh, the PowerPoint presentation, uh, I could show them there even larger where they could really see the details and so on quite well. But um, uh, for some reason, they wanted all this done. And those years, all those years, I never knew why they were having me record things and document things, uh-huh. the dates, the time, take the pictures. And here's what's funny. I started out years ago with a pocket camera, $10. You know, it should take about Uh five feet away. That's all I had. And do you know everything I took came out just perfect. (laughs) It didn't matter if it was five feet, ten feet. (laughs) But they orchestrated that because they orchestrate so much in our lives anyway. But uh, I just, I I don't know any other way uh, of life except the life I've had, and to me, uh-huh. my life is normal to me, <laughs> but it wouldn't uh-huh. be to probably to most people. <laughs> but you know, yeah, like yours is, Janet, and you know exactly because you get all this stuff, and we see and hear into these worlds and realms. And uh, gee, sometimes I go to funerals, and uh, of course, the deceased who has crossed over is standing right there with the loved ones and telling me, <laughs> "We'll tell them this and this." And I can't do uh-huh. that. I mean, the people may not even be open-minded, yet they're in shock. 
of their loved one, and um, you know, oh, I, we get I all this information. One. Yeah, I had a friend and, once. I was at the his wife's funeral, and she uh-huh. left behind a little five-year-old daughter, and the daughter was devastated. And anyway, when I went home, she was bugging me. She came home with me, oh. and she wouldn't let me sleep, and she. She was. She had died of cancer, and she was saying, "I shouldn't have died. I should have fought harder. I left my little girl." And so, oh, and I don't know yeah. how I didn't do this, but I, I grabbed her by the hand. I said, "Let's go in into the future. We'll see how she turns out." So I took, mm-hmm. um, I forget her name. I think it was Stephanie. I took Stephanie with me into the future, and we saw her daughter. And we we saw like what happened. She did have to go through a rough time when she was in her mid to late teens, but finally in her twenties she stabilized and she was perfect. You know, she was happy and she got uh-huh. education. She had been well taken care of, and uh, but she did have um, anger that her mother died so young. So, you know, she was right. So, oh, uh, and then uh, she finally let me go because <laughs> I said I can't do anything uh-huh. more for you because you can't you can't do anything no. for the dead they're dead yeah yeah have you there's, had that where they, they want you to do therapy with them or no something? I haven't had that but usually um I explain to them uh if they're confused or don't it some don't even know they've passed and so on and I work with them and uh David and I crossed them over so many times uh, it we didn't have to know them uh, many many of them we did not even know right. who who they were uh but we could help them get over and get into where they needed to be uh our spirits always, uh, it's never going to die, of course, you know, but uh, mm-hmm. that doesn't help much when you're, you know, someone's, I know even with me seeing David all the time and still do, uh, when he had to leave, we had worked together in this uh, all through his life, you know, uh, since I came here before him to be his mother, but it was all arranged, it was all orchestrated that way, that I would have these children and uh, everything was orchestrated and our time we would go home and it was excruciating mm-hmm. uh, to know that he would go home so young and when he left I was absolutely lost in my world because um, we shared everything and we got the same things when we read for people whatever or if information that came to us uh-huh. um, you know that we got well we got the same things but one thing real funny that um, the spirits used to do and my mom and dad was a big part of this after they passed over um, on my computer I'd gotten a computer, didn't know a thing about them, but it would be on of a morning, and sometimes I would hear music on it if it was St. Patrick's Day, and we'd run down. I'd call to David, come down, come down from your bedroom. And there would be, like, Irish uh, playing cards and uh, greeting cards floating across what you call a screensaver and Irish music Uh going. Well, my grandfather was Irish. (laughs) Uh, One thing that uh, I... Now, I filmed, every, I have everything on film, and one morning uh, he heard something, came down, and he came to my door, and, Mom, you got to come and see this, and you know what it was? It was Star Wars music, <laughs> and it oh, had all these little ships out in space, and it had an astronaut with this pack on its back, on his back, and the, the tubes, and he's floating through space, and uh, it was and it was the cutest thing I ever seen. The music was just playing away, <laughs> but wow. it's amazing! It's amazing what they can do if you know if they're <laughs> wanting to do that or are working uh, that way. But uh, my mom and dad came all the time, all the time. And uh, they would, uh, not only could we see them and hear them, but they would write in our note, my notebook. I kept two notebooks by my bed all the time. Because at night when the uh-huh. ETs came, I would be writing down what they're saying and so on. Right. And uh, yeah. I have all these in, in their actual writing. And then when I found out I had a... Uh, baby sister and uh, twin brothers that I never knew had died before birth. And I found that out. 
Yeah, I didn't know that. And I was listening to James Van Prague. Uh, I went to one of his um, programs, and they told uh-huh. me to go there that I was I was going to find out important information. Now, they could have told me, but there's a reason they have you do certain things. Uh, he started naming my mother, my dad, their dog, Iggy. He named uh, uh-huh. that I there was a baby sister. Now, he didn't know who this went to. He does audience readings, you know. Uh, right. So you're sitting uh-huh. out there, but 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 my son and I knew all this was my our family, and he said there was a baby girl. Her name was Lecta, and she was named after her grandmother, my grandmother, whose name was Electa. So that's not a common uh-huh. name. And and then no. there was a set of twin of little twin boys, and one was named uh, Little William, and one was. Uh, Name little Artie. Well, the, my grandparents was Arthur and William. So uh, I was so excited. All this information was coming through, and I was writing as fast as I could go. Uh, when I got home, this was in Iowa. We had traveled through the day to get there to the show and back that evening. But when I got home, I called my dad's sister because uh, she was uh, living and very bright, and uh, she knew all the family history. I asked her, did I ever have a baby sister and twin brothers? And she said, well, yes. She said, I, why are you asking me that? She said, didn't your mother and dad? She said, why didn't your mother and dad tell you? And I said, no. She said, you, they never told you? And I said, well... I said, were we born yet? You know, I didn't know the order of the births. And she said, right, you know, yeah. I don't I don't remember the order of birth, and, uh, but the names were exact, Le- uh, Lecta and, you know, little William and little Artie. And so uh, oh my the little goodness. spirit girl. Wow. Yeah, you know, the, the little spirit girl that lived here in the house, Katie, who's in my books, uh-huh. uh, she passed here at five and a half, almost six years old. Um, I asked her to take me to the old cemetery. I knew they had to be buried there because the rest of the uh-huh. family was out there. And I got in the car, and I see spirits that ride with me a lot, and uh, she took uh-huh. me to the cemetery. I parked on a back road, and I walked up a little hill, and I didn't need her anymore. I knew where to go, and there were my baby brothers and my little sister and <gasps> a lot of the older Oh, my God. Family. And the wow. amazing thing was, just a few feet from my family was Katie's family, and her little stone was there. <laughs> oh, wow. So, uh, but wow, isn't that spirits, interesting? So, Katie, mm-hmm. is she maybe uh, on a soul level related to your family? That, that seems beyond uh, yes. coincidence that her family could be buried near your family. Well, it was ironic because I, I wrote all this in uh, the books. Um, it was some time later. I, I have a lot of visions, and I went into this vision, and Katie and I was in the front yard. It was winter time, and the snow was falling, and we were uh, playing Ring Around the Rosie holding hands, and we had on long white dresses. And I remember I looked up at the front of the house, and this house is very, very old. And in the window, it had a uh-huh. kerosene lamp, and the light was just uh, flowing onto the snow, and the snow just sparkled. And it hit me then what she was telling me, that I had been her mother at one other time. Oh. So, and I wow. felt that one of my my daughters uh, today, you know, Katie, has followed, or I'll say, you know, what I mean, has uh, uh, one of my daughters is uh, part of Katie. So um, Ah. everything just says it should, but I'll never forget that vision. It was as clear as a bell, and and I knew exactly what it meant then and what she was showing me. So um, I have seen my uh, daughters uh, today, you know, that I have today in other lives with me, and my son too, of course. But uh, it's amazing yes. how they can orchestrate things. <laughs> and what's interesting is my cousin's name is Lois Electa. Oh, my, you're my, kidding. My, you my mother's <laughs> my mother's uh, sister's daughter is Lois 
Electa. <laughs> and I I never heard of the name before. And I've never met anybody with that yeah. name afterwards. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? You know what? I say we have a very deep connection because I, other than my grandmother, I have never heard that name till tonight. <laughs> Electa. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh wow. this, is, this is too weird. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> Lois Electa. Now my my yeah. my um, uncle who was very religious said that he they had twelve children and we said uh, Uncle Steve and uh, uh, where did you get all these names? And he says, well, I found all of them in the Bible because some of them we hadn't heard before like Electa, but every single, so there are 12 children, they had a first and a middle name. So all of them had first and middle names that were all found in the Bible. And so maybe, mm-hmm. yeah, there's something like that. Yeah, Electa. To, I don't know how you find yeah. that. Bible search. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm, well, that is. Yeah. I've got to find that. <laughs> I've got it to may find be that. There. All these people are oh. dead now, so we'll have to ask them. Mm-hmm. Uncle yeah, Steve, that's right. He, he, yeah, he made it to like ninety nine, so he got he was pretty old. He he, he almost made a hundred. So, wow. wow. So it's so interesting this connection between life and death. Um, what happens to a soul that doesn't make it? Uh, my brother was real like pro uh, anti abortion, and he was saying all this stuff and. I said, well, I think they just go to another, you know, they pick another one, you know, if they get aborted or if they get miscarried. Because I remember coming in, um, my mother was not real happy about being pregnant. She felt it was like a social obligation as a person uh, of uh, reproductive age after World War II in the 50s and 60s. She thought it was her duty to have all these war babies and her sister was popping them out. She had 12. And my mother had two, and she's like, oh, God, I'm pregnant again. So I left. I remember leaving, and then I came back um, the next time she got pregnant. And she was sick, really sick the whole time. She didn't uh, really like being pregnant or, or taking care of newborn babies. But she never expressed to anybody. It's like you know, I just got this communication with her you know, now that she's dead. But then I came in and I said, you know, yeah, it was rough. You know, it was not nice being uh, formed with such ambivalence. And uh, my mother never ate properly. And she she was just, uh, she was depressed. She, instead of postpartum Mm -hmm. depression, she was just depressed. And, uh, but I said, I have to be here because of what's going to happen now. This is why I'm bored. I'm here for this time. So, what uh, information have you gleaned from this interaction with David and and people that are on the other side about this uh, life death birth cycle? Where well, people the, go, uh, the, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The heavenly beings uh, uh, always uh, explain to us a lot about uh, whether it's abortions or if they die right before birth, right after birth. Uh, everything again has been orchestrated everything's been planned but they can have their free will to change their minds and some of these souls um, they decide maybe last moment that this might not be the ideal uh, time that they want to be born and they can retreat back and they they called it a turnaround and uh, oh. so they have their free will to do this, but uh, they also then can uh, return back at a different time, you know, when they so choose to again. I know uh, one thing, uh, like uh, myself and my son and, and probably everyone, uh, we sat down with the council before we ever come into this earth, before we're ever born and uh, we make a lot of decisions on what we're going to do while we're here and uh, maybe uh, just different things and uh, how many children we're going to have. But we're all agreeing on these things together with the council. So this is the, like the council in the Bible. And right. um, sometimes they tell us, uh, I know they told uh, uh, me and then later my son, 
that uh, we were taking on a little too much, but uh, they do it very kindly and with compassion. And they're certainly not going to tell us how much to take because, again, that's our free will. So we came here to teach different things and to help people. Uh, it's I love the part helping people. <laughs> and, right, uh, I do so that's too. How that's, yeah, and that's how that's all set up. So when a baby doesn't make it or dies after birth or if they die at one or two, whatever, age, um, they have decided this just like my son did when he told us at five that he wouldn't live long, that he would die young, and he knew his journey. Um, Although most, I would say probably a lot of people will never remember their journey, but he knew for some reason that he was allowed all of this and to know what he was going to do and that we would work together. But, yeah, they they come back. they can return back when they want or come in another baby. They may come to someone else in the same family. Uh, it, there's a thousand ways these things can happen, but it's a decision. Yeah. And then, then for some reason I was remembering, I'm going to be turning 64 on February 6th. So, you know, that song by the Beatles, When I'm 64, Will You Still Need Me? Will You Still Feed Me When I'm 64? And then when I when I got into that memory, I was teleported back to when I heard that song as a child. I, I was going to look up what year was that. So I was, and I remember right where I was when I first heard that that song and what I thought about it. And as I was listening to when I'm 64, back in whatever year that was out, right, 60, I don't know, 65, 66, something like that, um, by the Beatles, and. When I was listening to that, I was teleported to this time, like when I was 64. Mm-hmm. But one of the things that I was doing when the song came on is we were we were children. We were uh, swinging a pendulum over our left. Uh, you put your palm up, and right there on your palm, you would swing the pendulum, and you'd ask how many children you're going to have, and if they're male or mm-hmm. female. And I Mm -hmm. didn't give birth to any of them, but I I kept going. It's like we were counting 13, 14, 15 children. I'd go, what is this? I don't want to have all those kids. Why does this thing keep going? (laughs) Because of everybody else. But now that I'm a contacting experiencer, knowing what I know that, you know, I was part, I'm part of the, the Anunnaki hybrid program. There's a gray hybrid program, but I'm part of the Anunnaki hybrid program. Mm-hmm. But I, it uh-huh. makes sense now. Now, do you have any hybrid children besides the children you gave birth to? Are you aware of anything like that? Uh, there, well, yeah, there was um, one in the beginning of a very beginning of a pregnancy that uh, a miscarriage. So that was the one I'm speaking of. Uh huh. That turned around. And you so, know, did the turnaround. Mm-hmm. Did the turnaround. Oh, okay, okay, cool. But are are you part of the the ET breeding program? Are they have they taken yes. your? Yes. Okay. Yes. And you only have one with that program, or have they shown you more? No, there's yeah, there, there's more. Sure, uh huh, there is. And uh, sometimes, uh, you know how we meet them as they. Uh, are a little older and so on like that. Now, we went to see the babies all all the time, and uh, I remember um, they were always in the the same size containers, and it looked like water, but it was some kind of fluid, you know, that they have them in, you know what I mean? Uh Uh-huh, And um, their their heads underwater and everything. And (laughs) I would always panic and uh, I was so scared they were they were going to drown, and uh, David would have to say, "No, mom, mom, they're okay, they're okay," you know. And okay. that was years and years ago <laughs> when I had to start uh, remembering. Yeah, this this is how it is, you know. But yeah, I've uh, been around um, a lot of the hybrids and uh, watched them as they grew and um, things like that. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, I am working with uh, Gloria Hawker. Who's a, have you ever had a conversation with Gloria Hawker? We should have you on together. Mm, you guys sound like you. Oh, she's oh, wonderful. Oh, no, I don't think um, Well, we're working on making some, uh, at least a conference sometime um, 
I have to talk to her. I was waiting for the holidays to get through the holidays, but we're going to be looking at venues. We're looking at probably Albuquerque, New Mexico. Where were you? Where did you present the last time you presented? I was um, in Dulce, New Mexico. Dulce. Uh, at, oh, yeah, that's right. We uh, talked I was, about that. Uh huh. That was the um, Apache and Navajo Nation. So that's where I spoke for them. Okay. So I was looking and, uh, at the schedule with all of these different events. It's amazing. I mean, there is disclosure. You should see how many events are going to happen this year with people speaking. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm about to contact the hotels and everything as soon as the, you know, the new year, which is in a couple of days. So I definitely, mm-hmm. you know, we we want you there. Um Bring your PowerPoint, bring your pictures. It sounds like we're going to have to have maybe two presentations, one about your ghost and one about your ET contacts or something. I don't know. How how long was your presentation, or did you cut it down and cut it back? Uh, let's see. I was thinking they gave – I think we each had one hour, I believe we uh-huh. had. Uh, but I don't know. Now, this the conferences you're talking about is where? I if haven't said, uh, um I haven't set it up yet. I'm looking for dates. Oh, I and see. I kept looking oh, I see. on I, I go oh, online, yeah. I research the other ones because I don't want to have them right opposite each other. I know the Dulce one was opposite the Roswell stuff and it's like people don't oh, know where I to know. go and end up, <laughs> yeah, it's just confusing. So I'm trying to find a date where it could be before or after somebody else's but not the same weekend cuz I think we all need to support each other, and I don't want to be in competition. Oh. I mean, somebody's having something in New York or Maine, or, and then I'm doing it the same weekend. That's mm-hmm. okay. But even that, I want to try to not have them the same weekend because I go to conferences all the time, and people fly in from all over the world. You know, I'll be going to the oh, UFO conference, which starts my year in February. That's in February. And the people at the UFO conference, uh-huh. they're, uh, they're, I have a friend that comes up from South Africa every year, and people from England yep. and Australia. So whew, people fly in from I've, everywhere I've, to be a part of it. Yeah, I've Go been ahead. there the last three years, and uh, uh, you're right. And I, I certainly agree with you about, um, you know, uh, trying to get together and have this because uh, more and more people are coming forward at long last. It's so wonderful, and they're not afraid to speak up of um, their experiences. Love it. I just love it. Uh, not afraid. Are you going to be at UFO Congress this year? You know, um, I had intended to, uh, and I can't give you a yes or no for sure. I've got to decide something really quick. I kind of got backlogged on some things. That's the only reason I, I uh-huh. have to make a decision. Right away, but it, you know they come from Europe. They come from everywhere, and uh, it's, oh, it's a wonderful. Uh huh. Yeah, and you meet well, all these. Well, we're going to have a table and... there. We're going to have a table oh, wow. to come up and say hi to us. We always get a table, oh. and we're going to be planning. Um, I'll, I'll be planning this week. Hopefully, finding a venue and finding some dates. And I've got someone that's going to be. Um, putting down the down payment and the contract, and then we're going to figure out. Uh, I see it like a, a, a symposium, maybe some workshops with a in the middle of the gathering conference, and um, pulling together the energy of all these incredible experiencers. You go to these large conferences; they don't really allow a lot of time for experiencers to share their stories. And I think those are the mm-hmm. most fascinating, the, the stories of experiencers. And I know uh, they had one in Maine every year, and that one did not, they didn't get the funding. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can to pick up the the uh, the ball <laughs> and carry it. And okay. Up. And so I definitely uh, will, would love to connect with you and figure out how to have you at this conference because – um, the more we can get together and connect the dots and share our stories, we'll have the presentations and panels. Did they have any panels at the Dulce event? Uh, 
Uh, well, at the Dulce, no, they didn't have the panels. They uh, they had six of us speakers, and uh, uh, Travis Walton was one. I usually see him at most uh, everything I go to. He's a really, really nice, nice person. Has a lot of good information on his abduction years ago, you know, in the movie they made off of it. But uh-huh. I'll tell you what, now that, now that I know you you guys are going to be out there for sure, um, I'm going to get busy and see uh, what tables are available, and uh, I would just love to see you and Sasha and uh, get to uh, help sponsor this uh, experiencer thing because it's just great. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's so it's, uh... So we were looking in Albuquerque because, uh, well, Gloria lives there, and she's got about two to 300 uh, in her – she has a group, an experiencer group. Um, uh-huh. so she said it built – it grew like wildfire. She said most times we we um, get a venue to hold the meeting, and we have to turn people away. And I said, well, tell uh-huh. me Albuquerque is a good place to start because, <laughs> uh, oh, you know, yes. bills, you need enough people to sign up and say, yes, they're going to come with it. So I will uh, definitely keep you in the loop uh, and uh, Ruthann and, and all the listeners Please in the do. loop, and I'll be getting that out, and we'll get a website up. I have a designer. I'll give her the information. We'll stick it up and start uh, promoting it as soon as possible because – it's time. <laughs> That's yes, what I got. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, you do it's have time. to do it so far ahead because uh, I wanted to be at Roswell too, but Roswell and Dulce was the very same weekend. <laughs> so, yeah, you um, can't be two places uh, at once. Yeah, yeah and if they had just been a week apart, I, I would have been at both of them, uh, you know, but uh, that's so it's good to do it way ahead. Um, so uh-huh. you will have your table out at uh, the uh, UFO Congress Conference then in Phoenix. Oh, we definitely, uh, we bought our table. We're sharing one with Misha okay. Johnston, and we did that, oh, about five months ago. We we knew, we knew for sure we were going to go to that one, and I'm actually going to go through Vegas. The day before is, uh, what's his name, Hall, the guy that does the tall whites? Oh, what's it, Charles Hall. Charles Hall is doing a day presentation on Sunday in Vegas, and the way my tickets are working out, it's cheaper to go through Vegas. So I said, well, let's stop. Let's go a day early, go see Charles Hall, and then um, I'm going to stay at Misha's house, and we're going to all come over together to the UFO Congress. I always get there early so I can judge the films, and uh, Caroline Corey's going to be there with her new film, and she talks about the, the holographic nature of existence and how we're all one and that quantum physics proves that we're all connected and we're all one and, uh, you know, it takes us from victimhood to empowers us that what we do does yeah. matter and our no, thoughts I do think matter. So. Yeah. So, our, yeah, uh, our, our thoughts are very uh, are things. So when we send out those thoughts, they are things. Uh, I'm like you; they're they're very important, very powerful. Our words. Yeah. So when you think you can't do anything about it, all you have to do is change your thoughts. If you find yourself thinking, mm-hmm. you know, negative thoughts, guess what you're doing? You're creating that. So erases, erases, uh, switch channels, uh, go into a different lane. Create a new thought, and you can overwrite that with something kind, loving, conscious, you know, and uh, that goes into the grid, into the morphogenic field, and that changes everything for everybody. Everything constantly goes into the grid, into the field, into the morphogenic Mm -hmm. field, and then it comes back down into us individually, and that's how we can keep up-leveling and changing. So... I'm excited. I, I know there's it's very confusing, here, but I, uh, I'm just excited. I think there's something really oh. good going to happen in 2018. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I do too. I, I get that too. Uh, I was talking about that this morning, and I said, uh, "Boy, there's going to be a lot of things and changes coming in uh, 2018." And I said, uh, "A lot of good things too." So I'm glad you said that because that's. That's what I keep getting so strong. Also, it'll be uh, right. very uh, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm excited about conferences. I, I'm that way every year. I usually uh, go to Phoenix, and then uh, I get home, and 10 days later I'm in uh, um, oh, Eureka Springs, Arkansas, the Lawrence Cannons, you know. Uh, yeah, now so tell me about that, because I've been... I've been wanting to go well, to that, and um, um, I go ahead. I I kind of oh, I enjoy it. I, it's it's a much smaller one, but I really enjoy it. And you will love Eureka Springs if you've never been there. It's the most quaint little town. It looks like a storybook, something out of a storybook. I Aww. love it there. Uh, oh, boy, it's beautiful. But um, people come from all over there also. Um, you could probably look up and see who the speakers are this year um, and um, all about it. So I'm usually always at uh, that conference also. So um, uh-huh. I've traveled a lot this last this year so uh i kind of was glad to be home a while and just do my work here because i'm not the greatest <laughs> traveler in the world <laughs> Living out of the i hear you <laughs> but i will yeah. uh, certainly um look forward to hearing uh back from you when you get things lined out and uh, I... i'm hoping now you know to catch you in phoenix uh that would be great. Good, 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 good. We have to go and have lunch or something together. And uh, so uh, let me know if you're coming for sure. And uh, let's see, we're we're still broadcasting, although we're having a fun chat. Let's see, we're having a fun, fun, fun chat. I'm going to look into if The problem is it's in April, right? The Eureka Springs, yeah, Dolores yes, Cannon uh-huh. thing. And that's yes, really usually, coming up fast. Well, <laughs> Yeah, it even it can hit on Easter this year, but you know what? People still came because um, I know some people were wondering and some of the vendors if uh, that would um, you know be less people to come in. But you know what? Uh-huh. They came in. Uh, they I came know in. the year before uh, Eric Van Daniken from Egypt. He was there. Uh-huh. You know uh, that was really really good. He you know he wrote Chariots of Fire and all those books. Uh, right and. Uh, I love his work because uh, I love Egypt. In fact, I just went to see King Tut, the exhibit in St. Louis yesterday. <laughs> it was really, oh, really wow. good. Oh, <laughs> wow. No, yeah. it was there. Uh, oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Well, here it is, the 30th <laughs> Annual Ozark. Oh, that was last year's. We're seeing for, for, here's the 2018. Hold on. I'll, I'll do a little commercial for you people at the 31st Ozark Mountain Conference. And they have confirmed Stanton Friedman, Linda Moulton Howe, Chase Kloski, Kloski uh, Forrest mm-hmm. Crawford. There's a lot of TBAs. You know what? You need to get your act right. in there, Ruth Ann. See if you can get on yeah. as a speaker. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to be announced. So I think I'll send well, them a, a letter, too. I see um, Linda Moulton Howe at every nearly most I go to, and we we kind of talk quite a bit. And uh, I really love her work. I admire the things, uh, just unbelievable work that she's gotten done. And uh, sometimes Barbara Lamb uh, will be there. You know the crop circles she studied for over yeah, 50 I years know Barbara. and things like that. Oh, just wonderful people, and, you know, it doesn't matter of age. We keep working as long as we can ever work because this is so important to us, and it needs to be uh, gotten out to the public. But um, I I just love all this. I I get so excited about all of it because um, it's kind of like – also being being back home where we came from, I'll put it that way. You know. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I I understand. It doesn't really matter. It. Um, I mean, it's, the speakers are important, of course, but the people who gathered these things, it's like a family reunion, and the conversations oh, that yeah. you have. You know, like in the vendor room or out the hallway or over lunch or mm-hmm. or breakfast or something, those things are just as powerful as you know coming to the events and and talking to the speakers. So, 
Uh, I would go to the mall if I could afford it. I should put a GoFundMe. GoFundMe, oh. so I can go to the conferences. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would, too. I would, too, because uh, this, this is our lives. This is what we know. So, you know, that's why I know we get so excited and feel that way because, <clears throat> you know, we kind of lead – until we start talking about these things uh, and, the, like, when the timing's right and, like, uh, my ET family said, now is the time, begin the book. Now you t- are to start talking about this and telling our real truth. We want our truth told through your books. So your words will speak for us. And it was exciting because um, uh, all these messages that I, I have from them uh, – I've put a bunch in this one book, but I've got to write a couple more books to ever get, you know, uh, more I messages know. in. I've, mm-hmm. I pulled, but it's I all pulled my, uh, yeah, I pulled my uh, chapters. I have like an outline, and I said, okay, i got to get this written. So I pulled it into a <laughs> yeah. template last night. I said, okay, I'm getting serious. I'm going to write this book. And... Um, <laughs> Because it, it, took, it took me like three months from, uh, the, you know, the outline to full production the last time I did a book. But I had to shut off, the, you know, the phone and uh, say, you know, from six to eight every night, that's my writing time. I don't care who it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't do any of it right. But when I, when I say yes and I agree to it, it comes through me. It mm-hmm. just flies. I can, I, I yeah. was a secretary for, for 30 years, right? So I can type you know, flow of consciousness. I can type 80, 80 90 words a minute, and it's like, <laughs> oh. what are you writing? Oh. I don't know. I'll, I'm going to keep going. I'll <laughs> see what it says when I stop. <laughs> You know what? I, I love that when when they're right there with you also, and you're writing, and you write all you type all these things, and then you go back and look at it, and you're like, wow, you know, <laughs> this is, Where does this that is come really from? interesting. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's our world. <laughs> and, and it's, it's not really chilly. It's it's it's. I I think what it is is you're just connected to your higher self. To the supercomputer mm-hmm. of the con- cosmos, it's not like I'm gone and there's somebody taking over me. That's kind of makes it scary. Like, but no, nobody's uh, possessing me. It's just I'm just doing this. Uh, I'm accessing my whole self. I think that we're in mm-hmm. these little avatars, you know, our little human form. But when I get into a writing mode, everything comes through me, and I'm a giant cosmic being. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody took a picture of my by my R at that point it would be out through the roof, you know, and, and then uh and I'd stop and I go, ah, Okay, that was fun. <laughs> so Oh, I can't wait to see uh your next book. <laughs> if I can inspire well, you to get it written. But I'm yeah, I'm excited about your PowerPoint. I uh, it's like I really wanna cr- I have that uh, because of what you said. You said you have all these pictures. I I had a I had a, a UFO. It was, it was conscious. It was talking to me. I I said, "What beings are in you?" He said, "No, I'm the craft." So it was I guess AI, but it was very very high conscious. It, it felt loving and kind. You know, just able to do the whole thing. And it came and it it landed right on my. It didn't land. It hovered like about five, six feet off of my deck outside my, I have like a ski oh, chalet wow. type building and there's a big deck outside uh-huh. my front window and it hovered exactly in the middle. Like I didn't have to move my eyes right or, right or left. I didn't have to move my head uh, up or down. Or, I mean, it was like it came and just posed for me right center in, in my frame of vision. And then it sat there for 15 minutes and, and I, and I just was talking to it with my mind and it was talking back and I said, can I take your picture? And it said, no. Come on, come on. It's right on my phone. Just let me do No. If you go for your phone, no. we're going to blink out. So I said, oh, you brat. Oh. Said, well, just, just appreciate looking at us, looking at me. So I got to I got to stare oh. at this uh, thing for like 15 minutes, and it was the most amazing thing. So it, oh, it yeah. twisted through, in and out of this space. It was like a twisting motion. It twisted in, 
Mm-hmm. Then it went 3D. Mm-hmm. Then it twisted out. It's like it, it. Oh, it was like a ball crinkled up and twisting. And then I was because I looked like what the heck's that? You know, and it, and it unfolded into a ship. Sat there for 15, maybe 20 minutes, uh, and then it did the same twisting into. Uh, so it was, I was very appreciative that it showed me. What's the closest you've been able to get to a craft? I mean, I know you've been odd craft, but uh, like when they say, come oh look yeah. at me. Oh, well, gee, let's see. Uh, they've, they've been around the house here so much, sometimes they would be in the back. Uh, I have some uh, uh, large part in the back of my house. Uh, they, and before some of the newer homes were built on behind me, uh, they would come back there. So I guess, gosh, I wouldn't know how to determine in feet, but, you know, like right over the house. The thing of it was, not only seeing them, uh, they would always let us know if they were coming in. And uh, uh-huh. we would find um, or get the information uh through uh, telepathy, you know, that uh, telepathically, that uh, they would say, you will see us tonight, or go into the yard, take pictures, 8, 8, 8 p.m. or 10 p.m., and we were always getting uh, those kind of messages, too, but uh, I guess I would say over the house, but I have, I can remember, I've been in so many, and it happened so many times, um, I can describe them. Uh, I think fairly, really good, and uh, and tell what we did on them, and I would keep track of all that. But I know one time my son, he he said, I'm going to sleep on the sofa in the family room tonight because uh, they told us they were coming tonight, and he said, I want to be awake if I can when they come. Um, Uh But uh, he came and uh, called up the stairs to my room. Uh, Mom, come quick. He said, they're here. He said, I just saw three. So uh, by the time I came down and everything, uh, we didn't uh, see them anymore. So I don't know if they waited until later when uh, he was sleeping and then when I went to bed and was sleeping because uh, towards morning I know I was out and about with him. And he's all right. David is <laughs> where I am, so we're out there. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of vehicles came and picked you up like the – the one I saw, I call it the sport model. And when I was on J- Johnson Atoll, there was a little, there was a bigger one. It was a bigger craft, but uh, it came out. It was a, uh, it could go in under the water. I guess they all can. What's the difference between atmosphere and the water, right? They can travel in any kind of environment. But this one came out of the ocean and picked me up with my boyfriend at the time, and then we went back under the ocean. That was kind of like your. Uh, traditional, you know, round craft, Mm -hmm. you know, like, right. uh, Yeah. So that was that one. The other one looked almost like a a car. It was like a sport model. It it was very interesting. And I've seen that one before when I was at in um, uh, Honolulu, they took me out of the 16th floor window of a high rise. And just like, Mm -hmm. um, what was her name that uh, in New York? I forget her name. Uh, anyway, the lady they took out of the high rise in New York City, and everybody was on the Brooklyn Bridge, and they saw it from below, like some politicians. Anyway, so that happened in what the late nineties, and then I, or no, it had to be before that. When was that? No, I don't know. Last time. Anyway, I moved to Hawaii, and that same type of thing happened to me, and they took me right out the window. But it was into what I call the sport model. It almost looked like a, a giant, mm-hmm. thing, uh, like a limo is packed up. It's like a it's smaller than a limo, but it's larger than a. It's a, I don't know. It's like a maybe an old fashioned '60s Cadillac size. You know the big, uh, long vehicles. Mm-hmm. But oh uh, yeah, maybe slightly, slightly uh, bigger than that. Yeah. Uh huh. Well, I've but never, not uh, like that at all. But kind of like a like a Jetsons future car, you know? It's like oh, uh, that's I, cute. It. I should I have to draw this. I'm not a, not good at drawing though, but uh, I should draw it. So what uh, back to you? What what kind of vehicles have you been in? Um, I've, well, we've been in uh, several motherships, uh, the huge huge ones with different uh, floors, you know, and uh-huh. yeah. Uh, 
Usually, usually the most common one was the round one. I don't recall ever being in one of the real small ones. Um, I know a lot of times uh, we were picking up other people, um, and I remember in this town I live in, there was a a woman that uh, I knew that we were going to pick up. Uh, so they had me stand uh, at the when the door slid up. They had me stand there so when uh, she saw me, she wouldn't be maybe as frightened. That's why they had me there, to kind of help her get on oh. so she wouldn't be so scared. But uh, I could tell when I looked in her eyes, I could see the fear in her eyes, and uh, I knew she was uh, so afraid. And all of a sudden, she turned around and she ran, ran back towards oh, wow. where her home was. <laughs> and uh, the main E.T., um, he was standing beside me, and another one was standing beside him. And the one standing by the main one uh, said something about her leaving, and uh, the main one said, let her go. In other words, they never forced anyone. It had to be with their permission, whether they remembered it or not. They had at some point, oh. whether it was in a dream state, but they never, ever took people without permission. Um, all of these ETs that have ever worked with us and all the different kinds and the councils, whoever, uh, it's always with permission. So um, sometimes uh, we would go along uh, in that respect where they would see us first. So, you know, to maybe it would be easier for them to come on right. the ship, you know, in that kind of a dream state they're in. But, yeah, well, they uh, never took anyone. Even when they uh, would bring a different species, they would tell us uh, ahead of time, uh, they must have your permission first or they will not come. So all of them that we ever dealt with was um, positive, amazing, and uh, great teachers. And uh, the things they would show us and teach us, and um, they had these screens inside of the ships, and they would set us down, and uh, the things would go by so fast on the screen it was just a blur. And they would say, do not uh -huh. worry. This is all all being implanted into your brain stem. You will have this information when you need it. So many, uh -huh. many times we're, we're sitting in front of these screens, um, I got to see a lot of the things that they work with um, in order to travel and break down into energy molecules, and uh, that's how we traveled with them a lot, was uh, being broken down into just energy. And uh, this oh, is why they come. Oh, okay, so there's, come at, there's that... Mm -hmm. There's that teleport, like teleportation, like breaking. See, there's been a debate because I'm here in the middle. And I listen to all these stories, and they're saying we don't have teleportation, and then people say, oh, "Of course we do," and oh, it's not like yeah. Star Trek. And so you you are broken down into your energetic state and traveled that way. Yes, that's many interesting. Many times, yeah, many times, and uh, yeah, they would. Um, uh, they were trying to always get us to remember what we had always known, you know, being a part of them too. So they worked with us uh, diligently, um, and it wasn't just once a week, once a month. I mean, they would be here sometimes broad daylight, a sunny day, but, you know, they have a way to cloak themselves. And I asked right. that question uh, early on. I said, how come other people do not see you? And they said, because we have a shield, and they cannot see us right. unless, they, we, unless they want wanted other people to see them. But uh, it's been so fascinating. I sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes I just have to pinch myself and realize <laughs> what's been happening my whole life. <laughs> and, uh, I know. You know, you know, you feel like such a foreigner at times. Uh, I mean, in the respect that I had a real hard time adjusting most of my life. I, I haven't fully yet, but growing up, I just, knew I wasn't a part of anything I felt like. I was just really, really had a a, a time. I was very withdrawn and uh, didn't have uh, friends. And uh, I was learning all this over again, how to be human. 
and it was yeah, tough. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hear you. It was tough for mm-hmm. me, and I, I was so um, kind of uh, afraid of the world saying the wrong mm-hmm. thing, saying the wrong thing, and the judgment, criticism. So I had to be. I, I developed. I went the opposite. I, had, I was popular. I have lots of friends. But I never told. They never knew who I was. It was a facade. Right. It was only what was right. safe to say. So I could compartmentalize mm-hmm. my life. I kept busy with all these friends. But I'd go home at night, and there I was. And most of my contact was in the night. But I had one where I was when I was four. It was broad daylight. They took me to the mothership. I bet on the mothership. Uh, probably I traveled energetically. Maybe I wasn't as uh, interested in the. Um, the technology, but maybe, you know, I was, I don't know. I don't have every single memory. I just have snippets. I do regression with my husband sometimes and he takes me back and I'll say, you know, I remember this part. And then as soon as we, I go right under and I, I just come, I just get all this information. It's it's not difficult. I don't have to, I don't even have to think. It's just like allowing the time mm-hmm. and shutting off the phone right. and no television and just like, okay, well now we're going to look at this and poof, here comes all these memories. Um, I wanted to go back. So Gloria Hawker said the same things that she knew this woman that they were picking up. So you're having the same experience. You knew that woman that was was going to be picked up, right? You knew her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I knew her Ah. really well. And uh, another time uh, we were on the ship, um, I write about this. (laughs) It was really an experience (laughs) because they were going to take – this, uh, I'll call it negative thing out of this woman's body. So there were two doctors there, and I recognized the one from around where I oh, live. Wow. I was really shocked. I was just shocked. The other one I, I did not at all. And um, I describe how they do this procedure and how they did it and so on. And uh, for some reason, we were to see these things exist and uh, why they were removing it and so on. And I often wondered every time I saw that doctor if he had any memory of even doing that or if he also lived a secret life like we lived, you know. Oh, so, oh, that's uh, amazing! Wait, slow down, slow down. So, so you never talked to him about it. You never talked to your friend about it. No. Now, let's. What were they taking out of her? Was it like some kind of parasite or creature or uh, yeah, uh, entity yeah, had, or spiritual possession? What was yeah, it? It it was uh, uh, such a horrible. Uh, I guess I could call it an entity creature. And uh, they explained what it was, uh, which I don't wish I had that notebook right here. I'd tell you the exact words. And um, that, of course, it had to be taken out of this person. Um, you know, it could the person could not survive. How did you get you know? into her? How did they you get into her? Hook. Oh, I don't, I don't remember them even saying you know, that. The... But you know. Something a negative uh-huh. en- entity can probably enter so she got possessed when your defenses are down. Yes, yes. yeah, because and I uh, saw that because uh, yeah, we we've we've done exorcisms. Sasha and I've done exorcisms. People are possessed, and uh huh, and you tell them uh-huh. to go away. But this sounds more like a you know, with a medical doctor having to remove it. Mm-hmm. it they had so two, and it was I, a. And, I felt like they must have been hybrids also, you know, and belong, uh-huh. you know, bec- uh, although in, on this earth we're all different things. We're mothers, we're business people, we're doctors, we're, you know what I mean. Right, but, yeah, yeah. And they, they, they said it was important that we saw this and how it was done. So I never really questioned, I don't think I really asked, questions when we were with them hardly ever i just listened and i watched and i and then i would right. uh, document it later well, but uh that was interesting where did they take it out of her from did they remove it from her her eyeball or did they take it out of her her mouth or no. you know did they cut her open no, or did yes. they remove this from it, it came it was more up through the mouth yeah and then uh, one other time, um, I belong to ARE meeting, Edgar Casey's, because he's one of our main teachers oh. and uh, uh-huh. uh, area of research and enlightenment, always has been. 
uh, and I remember every time I looked at this one woman, I, I could see this uh, thing that had possessed her, and uh, I didn't know really what to do about it or to do anything. Uh, so one night uh, she lost control in the meeting. Uh, my son and I was doing Reiki on a man that had a uh, brown recluse spider bite um, on him, and she uh, was accusing us uh, that we were going to harm him and uh, we were going to kill him. She just come out with all this stuff, and I couldn't wow. see her face anymore. I could only see this thing that was possessing her, uh, this hideous <gasps> thing. Well, I wasn't worried a bit because Edgar had warned us that this was going to happen. He said, remember, I'll be at your side. You have nothing to worry about. So this broke the meeting up, this woman's actions, and then no one had said a word. Everybody was shocked, and we're just sitting there Uh also shocked at her. So all of a sudden she just shut up, and that hideous face was gone, and her normal face came into view that I could see. And I knew no one else but David and I could see that other thing in her face. Um, After the meeting, she was just like her old self, and she followed me to my car, and she said, oh, I apologize, you know, for her actions and so on, and and uh, we left uh, just fine and everything and started on the way home. But David and I uh, discussed that most of the way home, that um, something needed to be done. She did not even realize that she had that oh, in wow. her, you know, that session in her. So uh, sometimes, you know, we see things. We can't, we can't help everything. None of us, we'd lose our mind, you know. Uh, right. To do, that's why. <laughs> You know, all the things. But I felt so sorry for her because uh, it makes you wonder uh, when you hear of uh, exorcisms and things like that um, how often these things must happen. Uh, I was a friend of uh, Lorraine and Ed Warren, so years and years ago um, they used to use some of the pictures I sent to them. Um, They had classes at a university, but here's why they did They said, we do all the negative things and these evil things that we have to get rid of, but said, uh, yours is of love, and that's why it's so different, you know, and so they really uh, were interested in the work because it was just the opposite side. But I guess you knew Ed, he passed away just a few years ago. uh, Uh, I never got to have a conversation with either of them. I don't think so. Oh, well. No, wonderful, I wonderful. They're just wonderful, Aww. wonderful people. And uh, as far as I know, uh, she's still doing work um, of some kind. I don't know if she um, does classes anymore. I don't think she had been the last few years. I need. I haven't talked to her for a little while, but um, they always went to the places that uh, needed to get rid of uh, the bad stuff, you know. And uh, they Aww. spent their whole life. With such good, good people. I might have seen them early on in my. Uh, where, where were they located? It's, it sounds familiar. I, uh, I've been they, on this path for so many years. Connecticut, yeah. There was uh, somebody that came down from Pennsylvania. Yeah, they might have come through Pennsylvania and done uh, some workshops, but that would have been oh, wow. a long time ago, like uh, in the nineties. Uh-huh. So it's they sound familiar. It sound, See, I've, I've had such a long life. So much has happened. I don't remember half of what I've done. <laughs> I know I've what you on this spiritual yeah. path. <laughs> I, know, I know what well, you that's mean. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, oh, boy. I, I, it's a funny life. It's a funny life. So you were saying uh, that you got to interact with Edgar Casey. Now, he's, oh, yeah. he's dead. He died in the 40s, but you're acting with his interacting with his soul. I got to actually meet Hugh Lynn Casey. And mm. this was Pittsburgh in the seventies, I guess. It was sometime in the seventies. Um and that was a magical weekend. I was married to my first husband. I was very young. I got married at sixteen, so I was probably eighteen, you know, probably under twenty, uh, maybe nineteen. And I went to see Hugh Lynn, and he was he was brilliant. 
and uh, had a lot of insight about my dysfunctional relationship. <laughs> and I had to think about it. That's <laughs> be another probably five to ten years to leave. I'm very stubborn. Now I'm going to make it work. But um, I love Edgar Casey. I remember uh, finding him around the same time I found Ruth Montgomery, and and they they saved my life. I mean, what what can you do when you're in an ultra conservative place? And, you know, they don't really believe in spirituality. They believe in religion. <laughs> and you're there. And you're awake and conscious, and the rest of the world is asleep, and there's nobody to talk to. So thank God for Edgar Casey and all the books written about him. Oh, oh. So that's uh, – so uh, did he come through? Like, how, was like in a, like a seance? How did you speak to Edgar Casey? How did your group well, do this? Well, uh, the – uh, I found out, I'll tell you this first part, but I found out um, about middle ways in our uh, relationship with him that we had been together in every lifetime, every single lifetime we've ever had. So uh, the way that he introduced himself again was probably the end of the 80s, and he would uh, put this big EC uh, in the carpet, like if you write with your finger, and it would stay uh-huh. this big EC, and on that dresser, he would do it in front of this dresser, I had a holy box that belonged to my son. And we had bought uh-huh. it at a flea market. And, and David just, he said, I don't know how in the world that could be in a flea market. We just love stuff like that. And it was a healing box. And when you opened it, it had the, the candles. It had the prayer for the sick. And, you know, they would travel on horseback and in buggies years ago to people that were dying or sick and, and say the prayer and light the candles. So it was a real precious thing to us, and um, he would put this EC. Then I started uh, coming to my room or get home from the hospital with David, and I'd go up to change. The lid would be up, the the candles would be set in the holders, and I began to find these notes, and they would be signed to EC. I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> who is EC? See, it wasn't coming. Oh, yeah, I've got all kinds of stuff written by him, all kinds of things, and signed. So um, I went to uh, the library one day, and I was looking uh, for in the um, uh, the Native American Indian section, and the book fell out on my foot, and what is it? It's Edgar Casey's There is a River. Oh. So uh, <laughs> uh, it, it dawned on me that, my son wasn't saying a lot about it. He knew, but he was waiting for me oh, to remember. My he he always had a little book by his bedside, Think on These Things, you know, Edgar Casey's little book. And right. uh, mm-hmm. one time I asked him, yeah, I said, uh, this looks like a really nice book. And he said, oh, Mom, you'd love it. And that was all he said. So I uh, got home. It all clicked in. This is the man Edgar Casey, and I read that book. I cried and I cried as I read it because so many things I remembered, and um, I noticed uh, that he talked uh, some about his sister Annie, and he began to lead me uh, to where I realized uh, he made it very clear that in one lifetime I had been his sister Annie. So he's helped oh, us through wow. our our lives he he said i will be with you always and he's still with me and uh, always will be but you know um there was 11 names in his story in that first old book that um touched on somebody in my family and i remember writing those names down and i thought wow what is it you know when i'm reading it the first time before i found out uh-huh. uh, why why this connection was happening so he um, has advised and worked with uh, uh, David and I uh, all those years, and what he did that we love the most, he taught us the trance states that he himself uh-huh. did with Gertrude. So uh, oh, there wow. was almost, yeah, there was almost a year that went by, and he named the time. It would always be 10 a.m., and they would be on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. And that's when we uh, did the trance states. And uh, David would ask the questions like his wife Gertrude did to him when he was uh-huh. in trance. Uh, right. And um, I, would, I, would, I went right into trance. And uh, 
then um, I would answer the questions just like he did. And you, if you remember, uh-huh. all that was done for to heal people, you know, with their different right, um, right. health problems. So uh, I recorded all of those sessions, and um, at oh, the same goodness. time, uh, yeah, I have all the recordings and I have all the notebooks. So he told me uh, before I wrote the first book, he said, you're going to write five books at least, and he said, uh, one day they will be in my library at the ARE library, you know, in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Oh, my goodness, and yeah. The year, well, the year before last, I get a letter, and you know his uh, his nephew that ran it, his grandson, I mean, has been gone quite a while too, Charles Thomas. But uh-huh. the man that runs it now, I, I got a letter, and they put both of my first two books in the library. I didn't have the third one. Oh yet, my goodness! My... <laughs> so what he, everything he's ever told us. Our our teachers and guides from the other side has happened. Are the ETs? It's always always been just as they speak. Because you know, like me, you're like you don't doubt <laughs> the wisdom and yeah. knowledge that they have. <laughs> and right, these right. Beings, you know. <laughs> so uh-huh. uh, I was so thrilled. I was so thrilled, and I had always I had told uh, some of my family that this was going to happen someday. And I happened to find an old notebook uh, a few weeks ago, and I had asked in it, uh, when will my son be healed? That was all I I just wanted to hear, when uh he would be healed. Uh, Although he was terminal, I I believe everything's possible, anything. Right. And, you know, Uh they, they, they wrote on that notebook March 16th, 2008, now, this was oh. like 15 or more years before he passed, and guess what? I knew it could be a two-way sword. He would be healed here, or he would be healed when he crossed into the other side. And, you know, right. he died on March, March 16th, 2008, 2008, just like they wrote on that paper. Oh. And, and I just it. cried. Oh, my God. I just cried oh. because they were trying to let me know in a good, you know, uh, a a good way, Uh but that was many years before he passed. But I just found that, like I said, a few weeks ago, I have so many notebooks and tubs of them, and I happened to be reading in the one, and it just kind of threw me, you know, because I thought, yes, they were telling me right there. And a mother, I'm hoping (laughs) that it's going to be meaning here on earth, you know. Uh huh. But he passed. Oh, uh, is is Edgar Casey um, David Wilcox? Did he come back? You know, a lot Wilcox? of I, you know a lot of people's asked me that. I didn't know who David Wilcox was. I wasn't uh, very knowledgeable about things till just the last few years. But, oh, okay. But, you know, uh, I think anything's possible. I think uh, that. Um, I, I I can't really just answer that because he works through me, works through David. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I you mean, know. I, he he may could probably be. I I wouldn't never say well, he was. My understanding yes. my my understanding is is that we send fractals down into our various incarnations. So Edgar could yeah. simultaneously be on the other side and have a fractal of his energy of his right. of his soul personality. That's, in David Wilcox, exactly. and, um, and I met the author, yeah. uh, Wynne Free, Wynne, his name was Win last name Free, who wrote about that, and uh, anyway, so mm-hmm. it, I don't know either, but I just, um, they show well, the pictures of the two is, of them. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, and my, my feeling is uh, he's absolutely, uh, that's what's coming out of David Wilcox, is Edgar, yeah. I oh, mean, and okay, it may cool. be just like it. I I mean, just like you said, they have different essence. They they can come through different people. But I, the way I understand it, is uh, he's felt this, I guess, since he was small or something, you know. So, but right, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, why why couldn't it be? I mean, I've never asked anything about that or anything, uh, but. I know that uh, 
uh, things happen and they do come through and uh, they work through people in their lifetimes also. So, hey, you know. <laughs> and well, I invite this. you to go and on to the YouTube. Uh, I just saw it, Edgar's up in, okay. in my consciousness. And the YouTube on Edgar Casey in 2018. Um, it was kind of good. It has, you know, from my perspective, when I was shown 24 different multiverses, any future is possible. It's a, like a path you can take. Mm-hmm. And so um, yeah. it kind of has one that was predicted, and they made it into a wonderful YouTube. And it has some bad things, like parts of California going down. And, but the other side of it is like we enter the golden age of enlightenment. So um, uh-huh. anyway, when you, when you have a chance, go put uh, Edgar Casey. 2018 predictions. Okay. And, uh, okay. and take a look at that and see what you think. I will grab that and put that I on sure our show will. page here because uh, I think it's very interesting. So we're almost out of time. Is there anything, any final words for our listeners? That went fast. <laughs> well, um, I just think that if everybody could just treat each other with compassion and love and kindness. Uh, this would be the most magnificent planet, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I think that I think it would just be so wonderful if they could just let old uh, wrongs, uh, if they think has been done to them, go, and not waste their energy on all the negative stuff, and just send out love yeah. and good vibrations. Because I think if you treat somebody with love and respect, you're going to get it back. You know, I think that's what we need. We need in this world, and it would be a wow. great world. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, I've been in my own personal practice of life is if I find something really coming out, you know, wrong or thought coming out wrong, I just I take a I catch myself and then they go, okay, I'm going to breathe that through my heart. And I'm going to say it again, either in my uh-huh. mind or to the person or even to the, the cat that's meowing over there. <laughs> say it again through your heart with love and And it shifts everything. Even though that person may not yes. be anywhere near you, it shifts everything. It's like the most amazing thing. It's like, oh, I am God. I can shift everything just by pulling it into love instead of hate, instead of anger, instead of any any negative energy, just because uh, we all, we're all parts of God. We're all emanations of source, you know, how we symbol it. And we, we all have the crisis of consciousness and that capability, and we can just do it. But we don't have to play victim. Oh, yeah. So anyway, that's what I've been practicing is shifting it. Okay, we're out of time. So your books are once again, and you have a website. Yes, um, my books are Under the Rainbow Crossing, The Story of David, and aliens within our own selves, and they're on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Um, you can get them in soft cover or uh, readers. So um, that's my books, and uh, I hope that I get to see you and uh, Sasha at the UFO conferences. Oh. <laughs> I hope so too. And anybody listening, come over to see us at UFO Congress. And we'll all have a chat and we'll have a great time. And big hugs to you, and I'm going to hug you in person soon here. All right, we're out of time. Uh, Much love and blessings and aloha. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Love to everybody.